<laughs> well, I want to start by thanking all of you for joining our Zoom check-in. Um, each one of you took the time to comment or write, and um, you know, I did one of these before, and you, you, some, of, I think you saw it, and mm -hmm. we we kind of tapped into a little bit of the mental and emotional struggles of this quarantine in general, but even more specifically for people who are serving this time alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to check in with each of you. I wanted to start by asking you first to introduce yourself, tell us kind of a little about yourself, uh, like what life is like normally and, and what your quarantine, where you are. My name's Tracy. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. I have been married for 30 years. My children are gone. My husband is a CPA and he's gone all the time now. I'm a nurse, but I ended up getting contracted with the virus. So I have been in quarantine now for 14 days. And I'm not allowed to see anybody. I have my dogs and the cats just chilling with me and just getting through this. So it's kind of emotional there where I can't see anybody because I've been sick, but it's been, um, how I want to word it. It's, like it's scary because you can't you can't talk to anybody. How are you feeling? Um, I'll have a fever, hundred and one. Um, I get real tired. Well, and having the virus, it's a constant reminder. You are dealing with exactly what everyone's right. why we're all buckling down. Right. I want to make sure we check in first and get everyone. Suzanne, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're at? Okay, um, I'm originally from New York, but I'm in Tampa, Florida, and um, I have three children, a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 9-year-old. So I'm, the 19-year-old is not, she's doing school online, but the 17-year-old boy is just trying to do high school at home, which is interesting. And then the 9-year-old is a boy, and the energy is like, whoo, so I'm trying to deal with that. But I'm originally from New York, so all my family's in New York, and my grandfather right now is fighting for his life with the virus and so he's 96 years old um the hospital he was in the care wasn't the best um we don't get a lot of answers no one could be with him and it breaks our heart here in florida we can't do anything we don't know what's going on and we can't see him and for him to pass away alone and i remember you were the first one who mentioned it on one of the sh when you were on the view i was watching it and you said that and i thought man i'm not really thinking that people have to pass away alone until it hit our home and so we're dealing with it best we can. He's holding on, but um, we're not dealing with that, trying to keep the game face on for the other three kids who were, you know, questions and mommy, I'm scared. I want to go back to school and I'm trying to keep it to where it's positive and, you know, keeping faith up and hope up, but it, it gets challenging because sometimes it's like, where do I go? Who do I go to talk to? Who do I cry to? A lot of times I'm on my knees in my room by myself because that's, you know, that's the only outlet I can have. Well, I don't want to reduce it to just women, but I know typically as a woman, I feel that the women in my life are always the ones that try to carry the burden and uh, try to play the strong one, try to support. It's always someone else in front of them. Uh, I know, Tracy, with you being a nurse, just your training is always about someone else. And I think right. um, in these times, I would like to remind you, because people uh, remind me when I kind of hit my own breaks, that... Um, if, if you do break down, if you do cry, there's a life lesson and a teaching moment there too. And it's okay if you have to, because there are other people like us to stand around and hold you up if you need that. Um, because I know the kind of the weight of the world rides on so many women and their shoulders. I'm from Van Nuys, California. I've been on quarantine or isolation for quite some time. I have two autoimmune diseases. So once everything started to come out in the news in LA, um, my doctors pretty much said, we don't want you leaving the house. Um, I haven't really left the house since the second week of March. It's been interesting. I mean, the first week was, was the toughest. I kind of ate my body weight in snacks. And then, I, <laughs> and then I was like, you know, this can't go on. So, I mean, I live at home, but my family, a lot of my family members are essential workers. So they are going out. And so I try to, it's kind of sucky because you're home, but you can't be in contact with people and I can hear them on the other side of the door but oh it's God. yeah so like I've been like quarantined in my room as you can see <laughs> um, and just I'm waiting for the day that this is over but I mean thanks to all the essential workers I mean you guys are putting your lives on the line and I just want to say thank you Tracy I have my aunt 
is a nurse. I have my sister's a nurse, so they're all on the front lines. And it's scary because you don't want your family to right. get right. sick, but you know they're doing their jobs. And I couldn't force my aunt to stay home. She wants to help people, and that's what I love. The I think this. I think the one silver lining is that you're seeing people's true characters. And it's amazing that people are willing to sacrifice their lives and their health to help others. For me in life, when I get a chance to laugh or distract myself, I love a family board game or a game night. So I thought today we're going to try a new game, Two Truths and a Lie, and I can start it out and then we'll go around the circle. It's kind of fun to try to figure these out. So we'll see how this one goes. It might be better than charades. Okay. So my three are... One, I did one year of law school before realizing that wasn't for me. Two, I can walk on my hands. Hmm. Three, I played in a gay men's volleyball league for five years. I think the oh. law degree is a lie, is the lie. I would okay, say what? two, number two. The, the walk on my hands? Yeah. I think it's a volleyball. So you each think a different one. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, Suzanne is actually right. I did not go to law school. Oh, I can God. walk on my hands, and I killed it in the gay men's volleyball league. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, I minored in Middle Eastern studies. Um, the first day that I drove in Ireland, I crashed the car right out of the rental car lot, and I'm gluten intolerant. Ouch. Crash the car. I'm gonna go with the minor. I think that she um, did not study the Middle Eastern studies. Okay. Yeah. So you and I both think one, and uh, Tracy thinks two, and everyone um, believes you're gluten intolerant. Yeah, well, I'm not gluten intolerant. Oh. <laughs> you totally played us by mentioning the immuno part first, so we right. all, we were, you guys, we were set up. That's good. <laughs> yeah, That's really good. You got it. Um, my three are my friend's son. A friend of mine's son was in the Netflix movie When They See Us. Um, I grew up in John Sally's neighborhood. The NBA player John Sally, okay. and I studied abroad um, early education in Italy. I don't think your friend's son was in the Netflix movie. Don't tell me yet. I, that's what the one I think is a lie. I think the Italy one is a lie. I'll go with number two. <laughs> number two, which John was Sally? the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. So we okay. all picked a different one. <laughs> okay. So the truth, the lie is I studied abroad in Italy. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah, nice. I am nice. killing it. <laughs> yeah. She's on fire. <laughs> okay, Tracy. Okay. So I have a twin sister. I um, met um, Donny Osmond on Thanksgiving dinner one one year. And my daughter and I got into an argument with Barry Bonds in an elevator. Those are good. <laughs> um, You're definitely not a twin. Nope. You can't make two of you. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Barry Bonds. That's so random. <laughs> That's such a random story. I'm going to say twins. I'm with Sarah. You're right. I'm not a twin. <laughs> Oh my gosh, because then I started to question myself. I was like, maybe quarantine's extra tough on her because she's used to a <laughs> womb, <mate." laughs> Wow, that was fun. But I have to say, um, Indra, you probably won that because, yeah, seriously. I mean, seriously, you teed us up for yours. <laughs> like, that was amazing. But mm -hmm. before we kind of close off, one song that gets my family completely pumped is the song Gloria by Laura Brannigan. Mm -hmm. So if you feel so inclined, I'm turning to my dance floor, which is almost my bathroom. Anyone that feels like jumping up to shake it off can join me in. <laughs> I'm so glad I wore pants, guys. <laughs> can you hear I it? I haven't heard this song in so long. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the magic in our house is whenever something's going on, we hit it with Laura Brannigan and everyone starts to feel a little better. 
that's so awesome. I haven't heard that good. song. Yeah, my so heart pumping, so that's great. <laughs> Me too. I was like, uh, why am I so worn out? I just did a five count. <laughs> But that is a song that gives the pick me up. And before, so I want to thank you guys for doing this today, um, for being vulnerable enough to share kind of what's going on in all of your lives. And I want you guys to keep in touch. And whether you're having a good day or a bad day or somewhere in between, you don't have to do it by yourself, even though we're all by ourselves. So um, please keep in touch. And uh, let's just remember that at the end of this, even though we're all physically separated, we are closer than ever in some ways because it is for the first time in the history of my life, there's no us and them, there's humanity and a virus. And so I just wanna know that, I want you guys to know that we've started this little group and we're here for each other. And I'm just grateful for you guys to take the time to hang out, play and laugh a little. Now I'm gonna go chase a gremlin down, but um, right. <laughs> I love to all of you, Trace, please feel better. And I, I know, again, I'm thinking of your, your grandfather and, um, Indra and your gluten tolerance. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not. I can eat as much gluten as I want. <laughs> but I will be in touch. So stay in touch, you guys. <laughs>